Hey YouTube, it's Zoe and today I'm going to share what I read in November because we are now in December. Can you believe that we are now at the end of 2017? I mean 2017 was a mess of a year, so good riddance, but still, it went by so fast. Where has the time gone? Anyway, I read seven books in November, two of which were the final books for my young adult literature class, so let's get to talking about them, shall we? Now, the first book I read in November was Miss Marvel by G. Willow Wilson and Adrian Alfona, Alfana, which I gave four out of five stars. This is a Marvel graphic novel which follows a Muslim Pakistani American teen named Kamala Khan who one day is granted superpowers. She has to try to balance staying true to her roots and following her strict religious parents' rules while also learning her powers and saving the day. I absolutely loved reading a superhero book with a Muslim woman of color as a protagonist and she was fun and relatable. I loved how she wasn't a kick-butt crime fighter from the get-go. She actually struggled learning her powers and adjusting to them. Also, her parents weren't just strict, they were also loving and relatable. I really liked them too. I liked so many of the characters. I will definitely be continuing on with the series, especially since this first book only took me like an hour to read, so I think I can get through the rest of the series if I apply myself. <laughs> Sadly, the next book I didn't like, it was I Am Jay by Chris Beam, which I gave two out of five stars. Now, if you watched my last month's TBR video, you would know that I was really excited to read this. This was required reading for my young adult literature class, and it follows a high school senior named Jay, who is Puerto Rican, Jewish, and transgender, and it follows his transition process. I had such high expectations for this book because there aren't many young adult books that have transgender main characters, but sadly, this did not meet those expectations at all. I will say that the portion of this book that is dedicated just to Jay's transition process is very well done. I asked my older sister, who is transgender herself, to read this with me, and she said it was accurate. But she also did agree with my biggest criticism of the book, which was the main character, Jay. He is deeply intensely unlikable. He is a homophobic, misogynistic jerk from the very first chapter, and people do call him out. People who are just in the book to call him out, they just show up on the page, say, hey dude, that's not cool, and then they disappear. But he doesn't learn from what these people say. He doesn't learn from the criticism. Instead, he dismisses it and goes on being a homophobic, misogynistic jerk. I could forgive some of the things that he did if he learned from his mistakes and had some character development, but there was none. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you exactly what happens, but one of the things that does occur in this book is that Jay does something inappropriate with a woman without her consent, and she calls him out on it, but he replies that she was leading him on. So basically, he practices toxic masculinity throughout the novel, and I was not here for it. I really wanted to root for him, but he was not likable at all. The writing is also pretty stilted. I had a hard time adjusting to it, and there is no real direction to the plot. A bunch of things happen, but they're not very connected, and some of the things didn't even have to happen at all. I feel bad trashing this book because there's already such an underrepresentation of trans people in media, but this was not well done. It should have been so much better and I'm just disappointed! So please let me know down below if you recommend any books with trans characters in them, because I really would like to read them. Hopefully, I like them better than this book. On a lighter note, I then read The Lost Hero by Rick Riordan, the first book in the Heroes of Olympus series, which I gave 4 out of 5 stars, or I reread it. I have read this before. Two years ago, I read the first two books in the series, and then I stopped for some reason. I actually recommended my dad the Percy Jackson books, the first series, back when I was reading the second book in this series two years ago, and since then, he swooped in and read all of Rick Riordan's books. The Percy Jackson series, this series, the Magnus Chase series, the all of them, the Kane Chronicles, all of them. So now I feel like I have to catch up so I can talk to him about the series. 
How is he so fast? But of course, it's been two years since I read the first two books in this series, so I forgot everything that happened, and now I have to reread them. I forgot that the first book doesn't have Percy Jackson in it, and I was so disappointed because he's my favorite character, and Annabeth is my second favorite character, and she's only in it for a couple of chapters. I miss my babies, but I do enjoy the new characters as well. Also, there is the new Roman aspect to this, so I am learning things. I enjoy the change in pace and how all of the chapters switch between characters, so hopefully I will be getting to the next book soon. Hopefully it doesn't take me two years again, and then I'll have to reread this book again! It'll be an endless cycle. <laughs> Next, I read the final book for my young adult literature class, which was I'll Give You the Sun, I'll Give You the Sun by Jannie Nelson. I ended up giving it four out of five stars. I was wary going into this book because I previously read The Sky is Everywhere by her, and I didn't like it. I gave it two out of five stars. But luckily, I enjoyed this one. This follows two fraternal twins, Jude and Noah, who used to be the best of friends, but soon they drift apart. They are kind of the mirror images of each other. They're both artistic, but Noah is far more shy, while Jude is far more outgoing. Also, this story is told in a very interesting format. Noah tells his side of the story from back when they are 13 years old, and Jude tells her side of the story from when they are 16 years old. This story kind of reads like a soap opera, but not in a totally bad way. It's just over-the-top drama. Everybody is interconnected. Also, there are ghosts. And a lot of the characters are pretty stereotypical, especially one of the love interests. But again, I didn't totally hate it. It actually added to the soap opera feeling of the book. I just went along with it. I'm still not a huge fan of Jandy Nelson's writing style, and that's why I docked it down a point, but it is an engaging story told in a very unique way. Then I read American Drifter by Heather Graham and Chad Michael Murray, which was the fiction faction book of the month, and I ended up giving it three out of five stars. This is about a US Army veteran who suffers from PTSD and travels to Brazil in an effort to escape his memories. He ends up falling in love with a local journalist and somehow gets involved with gangsters. I enjoyed reading about Brazil because I have little to no knowledge about the country, and the authors fill this book with such compliments about the country. However, both of these authors are American, and I believe neither one is of Brazilian descent, so I'm not sure how accurate the representation was. The writing was also a little disjointed, and there were some repetitive sentences, but the storyline was so engaging, especially the ending. If you're reading this and thinking about putting it down halfway through, please see it through until the ending because it will resolve many of the issues you might have with the plot. It is very rewarding. I can't continue talking about this book without spoiling anything because I just want to talk about the ending, but I will be discussing this book with the rest of the Fiction Faction book club, which is Natasha from Toshopolis, Hannah from A Clockwork Reader, and Maureen from Maureen TV. We will be discussing this book and probably the ending over on Natasha's channel later this month. So if you've read it, please keep an eye out for that because I just, I just want to talk about the ending. The next book I read was Anya's Ghost by Vera Brosgel, which is a spooky graphic novel. This is about a high schooler named Anya who is skipping school one day and walking around outside when she suddenly falls down a well. Down in the well, she spots the skeleton and its ghost, and the ghost starts to haunt her. Also, Anya and her family are immigrants from Russia, and Anya herself is full-figured, so that was amazing diversity that I was not expecting. First, let's talk about the art style of this. I absolutely loved it. It is all monochromatic, and the way that she draws Emily, the ghost, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it all fits together so well. The art and the story, it creates this atmosphere which is so spooky and a little haunted, which, you know, it's about ghosts so it should be haunting, hauntingly beautiful. The story goes in an unexpected direction, but I really enjoyed it. It is, it would have been the perfect Halloween book, but I was just a month late. Still good though. Four out of five stars. The last book I read in November was Mary Poppins by P.L. Travers, the October and November book for Ostentatious, my classics book club, if you didn't know about it. I talk about it all the time. 
<laughs> there you go. I gave it three out of five stars. It was not what I was expecting. I grew up watching the Julie Andrews Disney movie, so I went into this book expecting that, but it was not that. In the book, Mary Poppins is vain, and frankly, she is just rude. Nothing like perfect nanny Julie Andrews. For some reason, the children fall in love with her, which makes no sense because it seemed like she hated them. I just really disliked her. Also, I know it's a children's book, but there was basically no direction to the plot. There were just random scenes, most of which are actually in the movie, but these scenes weren't really connected. I do like how bizarre it is and P.L. Travers writing style, but I will not be continuing on with these books. I'll stick to Disney instead. So those are all of the books I read in November. I will not be doing a December TBR because I have I've realized that I don't really stick to them. I make these TBR videos and then during the month I just read what I'm in the mood to read. So what's the point? Please let me know down below what was the best book you read in November and what book you have to read in December before 2017 comes to an end. Thank you all so much for watching and I will talk to you all soon in my next video. Bye!